From the beginning of time, mankind has dreamt of higher beings, angels, gods, and demons. But what would happen if angels were wounded? What would happen if they too bled like us? Today, we're talking about the Finnish symbolist Hugo Simberg's masterpiece, a harrowing piece titled The Wounded Angel. Brimming with an unspeakable sense of loss and melancholy, the painting demands the viewer's attention. Like the gaze of the boy turned towards us, it asks questions. What happened to send an angel, a pure and heavenly being, into such a state of disarray, her wing bloodied, her composure wrecked? Why is she being carried by two seemingly healthy boys? And why is one of them staring directly at us? And why would Simberg paint such an enigmatic painting and then refuse to give any explanation for what it all meant. With all these unexplained questions lurking around us, let's unveil the mystery behind the wounded angel and get some answers. Oftentimes, an artist's work comes to replace the artists themselves. The art goes to live on infinitely, while the artist lies buried in the tomb of history. This certainly was the case for Hugo Simberg, whose life and artistic legacy would come to be defined by the wounded angel. Born in Hamina, Finland on the 24th of June, 1873, to Colonel Nikolai Simberg and Ebba Simberg, Hugo enrolled in art school at the age of 18 and would go on to have a prolific career. Early on in his career, he would reveal his artistic prowess and masterful use of symbols in paintings such as The Garden of the Dead and King Hobgoblin Sleeping but none of these would propel him to the success that he desired. It would be in 1903, with the exhibition of the Wounded Angel at the Atanium Autum Exhibition, that Hugo Simberg would finally see fate be kind to him, with artists and critics giving him the praise that he justly deserved. Perhaps Simberg himself had an idea about the masterpiece that he would create and the effect that it would have on viewers. Meticulously crafted over the course of several years, he had a clear vision that he brought to life through a long and deliberate process. Luckily for us, he left many sketches and photographs that reveal the different stages of the painting's artistic progress. Upon further examination of these little tidbits, it's interesting to note that in the beginning, Simberg wanted his angel to be carried by little devils instead of boys. Devils or not, the little boys pass through a murky, colorless landscape, carrying a blindfolded, bleeding, and forlorn angel. The little girl in the stretcher holds in one hand snowdrops, which many critics have interpreted as being symbolic of rebirth and healing. But if that is the case, then who hurt her? Perhaps history can help answer this question. The landscape featured in the painting is that of Tara Helsinki, with Tulun Lati Bay visible in the background. The pathway along which the melancholic procession passes was home to several charity institutions. The common interpretation of the painting is this. The young and healthy boys are taking the wounded angel away to the blind girl's school and the home for cripples. Read this way, the snowdrops in her hand become an allegory for healing and the boys can be seen as young, responsible men carrying out their civic duty. But what if this was not the case? What if the painting points to something far more sinister? Several historians have pointed out that during the painting of the wounded angel, Simberg suffered from a brain and lung infection. The sick mind is not a friendly place, and the cruelty of illness overwhelms Simberg's masterpiece. The jarring contrast of the white, pallid figure of the angel against the healthy and plump bodies of the young boys speaks volumes here. The angel, typically considered to be a powerful deity, is seen ravaged by an invisible force, symbolized by the blindfold and the streak of reddish-brown blood on her wing. The boys carrying her seem to be aware of the rot that manifests in the angel. The boy on the right side seems dressed in mourning attire, while the one on the left stares at us almost as if he's accusing the viewer of something. With this little boy's gaze, Simberg seems to be asking us a simple question. How could you wound an angel? 
how could you tarnish innocence? Whether or not the blame falls on us, Simberg makes us all too aware of the world we occupy, a world without color, without hope, where angels are fallen, bleeding, and blind. But of course, this interpretation is not definitive. As the master of enigmatic paintings, no Simberg interpretation can ever be final, so your meaning is up to you to make. With this, we're signing off for today, hoping this video brought something new for you. Let us know what you think of the Wounded Angel in the comments below.